I'm thinking about um, one of the most important stories I've read in a long time today. Oh, yeah. What would that be? I mean, the level of importance is extraordinary. What did Jada Pinkett say now? Way more important. Oh, wow. I mean, I know that's hard to believe. That is hard to believe. But I can't believe this happened. The Wax Museum in Paris. You're really building this up. They got Dwayne Johnson's skin color wrong. And of all the things that are happening in the world, Corbin, of all the things happening in the world, no one's talking about that. No one's talking about Dwayne Johnson's skin color. Way too much. <laughs> hey, welcome back, George. To the show, Corbin. <laughs> Oh, Rick. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter yeah. for juicy content. Thank you to our new sports with Patreon. Follow us to the account, subscribe, the like button. All I want to know is way where's much. the wax Johnson? Way too much. Uh, that was that was that was theater right there, kids. Do you think they make the penis when they do the wax? Yeah, it's like Ken. Barbies. That's like Ken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let us know if you know down below. Hey, we're doing a movie of. <laughs> And welcome back to Spooky Month. <laughs> it's spooky time. Spooky, spooky. Boo! And on top of that, ah! we're doing another 2022 Malayalam film that we did not see in 2022. Uh, called... Yeah, we're doing a lot of time travel this year. We are. Yeah. Uh, Kumari, the horror thriller uh, directed by... Nirmal Sadev. Nirmal Sadev. Yes. Uh, and, and written so by... Oh, sorry. That's okay. I wanted to see... Oh, he, the story... Is normal, and it was co-written with uh, Fasal Hamid. Yeah. And uh, it's starring um... Prithraj Sukumaran, Ashwarya Lakshmi, Shine Tom Chako. Yes. Also known as Fafa Light. <laughs> yeah, that's what you have. Every single time. Lost him every time you see him. It's Fafa Light. Light. Yep. Uh, anyways, obviously this uh, came out last year. So if you haven't watched it, please go watch. It's on Pulling Net up my notes. Yeah. Uh, it's on Netflix, so you can go check it out. It is on Netflix. There. Um, and obviously the reason we're watching it right now is because it, it for us, uh, I'm wanting to do it to, uh, once again, as many spooky films as I can. Because, Indeed. Uh, we like that kind of stuff. So, Rick, your initial thoughts of Kumadi. My initial thoughts are a mixed bag for me. Mm -hmm. There's things about it I want to highlight that I thought were excellent. Mm -hmm. And there's some things about it that were that fell really flat for me, predominantly some things in the story that just didn't engage me. So the ultimate thing for me is I, I didn't like it that much. Uh, there was a lot about it that I did like, but that wasn't enough to carry me through for the totality of the film for it to be something where I would say, yes, I liked it. And I, I recommend it. Well, again, there are some things in there that I, especially some technical things. And I thought the performance of our titular lead she 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 did Ashwari. Ashwari, yeah i thought she did a, a very good job but mm -hmm. the ultimate takeaway for me is it wasn't enough for me to be a full endorsement and say i liked it mm. no i i'd say i liked it. It, it i do have issues with it though so it would be more of a mixed bag for me as well um there's, I think but we'll the have, things I liked, I really liked. I think we'll have some similar stuff in terms of like cinematography and, and, and other stuff like that, yep. obviously. Um, I thought it was a um, a really... Uh, it's similar in terms of... I think this genre of horror fits India very well because they have so much, for lack of a better word, folklore of demigods. We've seen it in a lot of films that they've done really well. Kantara, Dumbad. We've seen it like done a lot and it fits the genre quite well um and it's no shock that i mean i've said it many times that i think um the industry that's gonna start exploring horror and really start perfecting it not that this is perfection at all but um is the malayalam industry uh, and i feel like they are starting to explore it quite a bit i mean just this past year we had the one with um suban mm -hmm. we b b boom Picaro, the, the one before with the guy from kumbalanji nights this one and, and so I, I, I and i would I, I would rather see a film like this that is a, a a very in my opinion a very good attempt at trying to be a horror film when it's not made very much that has some flaws mm -hmm. than than to not attempt it at all because it's it's only going to make the genre and the storytelling that much better with more trial and 
error and more things attempted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about, uh, obviously, uh, our lead here. Uh, who yeah, Ashwarya about, Lakshmi. Right, right, Ashwarya Lakshmi. What do you think about her? Well, I she's just a, a, a very soft. We saw that in PS 1 and 2. Yes. Um, and she's just she's a solid actress she's right from the very beginning that first musical number you're engaged with her you can care about her immediately mm -hmm. she's very believable um i i feel like she's definitely an actress that where whatever you put her in she's gonna do about as good a job with whatever you give her as you could hope for i i she she for me by far and the acting aspect of it is mm -hmm. is the one that i enjoyed watching the most what about you mm. i liked her a lot as well uh i thought she did a very good job she obviously had the most um i don't know if she had the most to work with actually uh probably uh shine tom yeah Charco he had probably. a lot to work with he was a uh, his character was very intricate obviously uh but she was the one that was obviously more the central character or the stuff was happening to her yeah um so like in terms of like you have to look scared a lot you have to but also i don't feel like she was just a damsel in distress Either not at all a lot of horrors as well yeah not at all she was a very strong uh she brought a lot of emotion from the beginning to believable the emotion I, yeah, yeah i liked it a lot yeah um shine tom talk uh chaco i always uh enjoy he definitely had the the character in this that had a ton going on in terms of the story like what the what they gave him whether it was fully fully explained uh, all of his character, uh, I don't know, but I enjoyed his performance as well. Um, he he gave it a lot of some quirkiness to it, some uh, some intricacies that I that I enjoy. Some maybe sometimes it didn't always work, mm -hmm. but I I, I I always applaud the attempt. And I, yeah, I thought of the, I, I I always enjoy his performances. He's like I said, he's fa fa light for me. Mm -hmm. Not only in his looks, I think he's a very good actor. We've seen him many times. Yeah, we have. We've what seen him a lot. He's done a lot. I, the same thing. There were there were points of of me sensing uh, a choice was made for the choice itself mm. not really as a justification for something coming from an organic place of the moment and the why uh, which is very very common and it just didn't it didn't the believability factor it sometimes kind of fell back for me because i felt there was a choice made that was more performative than a choice being made that was really grounded in something uh in being mm -hmm. but they they were far and few between um for the most part like most things we see him in he was yeah. he was pretty good yeah yeah and uh Prithi Raj obviously he had a, a smaller role um yeah. but I, I thought he did uh well as well um the the some of the big shout outs of this that I think we'll definitely agree upon are the cinematography beautiful just like in it's very similar in terms of tone in terms of color palette of a Kantara yep. or a um, Dombad. Yeah, and even of... even some of the beautiful shots we got in the night shots of Jalikatu. Yes. Was, was similar. Um, very similar palettes, but equally just as beautiful. To really look pretty. At. Really pretty. Um, so in terms of like, you could watch this with the sound off and be like, oh, Joe, gorgeous. That's a freaking gorgeous. Uh, yeah. So shout it, out to the cinematographer. Um, yeah. The Abraham cin Joseph. Abraham Joseph. The, that, that for me was the predominant carry through. At the points where I was wondering why is that going on and that doesn't seem congruent and it even seems kind of conflicting and i wasn't caring which we'll get into that when we talk about story yeah. the thing that held me through predominantly was the beauty of the cinematography that just yeah. each frame was just a really really pretty shot that you could i agree you could just you could turn the the sound off mm -hmm. and just appreciate each standalone scene for how good the cinematography it, was it seems like a theme with this genre in india in terms of the folklore genre yeah because they gotta they gotta kind of create a setting an eerie kind of forests are a great place for forest, that <laughs> lots of reds yep um which is a very engaging color um not as not as vibrant i think as a bull bull that one no was, that was on a different level that's a whole other level how vibrant they made yeah everything. that's a whole other level this is more like um gothic and uh, I, but i th i think that was probably intentional it wouldn't surprise me if the combination of cinematography and production design talked about we want to convey in the visual imagery the differentiation between these two 
uh, monsters. One of them is of the mountains. One of them is of the underworld. And so we want things to be a combination of forest and sky mm -hmm. and dirt and mm -hmm. smoke. Yeah, I, th I thought they did a very good job Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. Um, so what were what were some of your uh, biggest issues that you you said you were having? Well, another real positive for me, I love big shout out to me was makeup. Oh yeah. These these creatures at at many I, points were Guillermo level for yeah, me. Yeah, I thought the uh, the the um, the man who's been there for hundreds in the years, attic. Yeah, oh, yeah. When he showed up, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, <laughs> one just the the makeup and VFX alone were beautiful. on that man were gorgeous, beautiful. Some of the best we've seen in so a horror shout movie. Shout out to the to the yeah. VFX and, and and makeup department. Great, uh, on, great on all job, the monsters. They were they yep. were really phenomenal. Yeah, so that's that's all the heavy side of the stuff that had the positives. The the larger thing, and this is admittedly, probably partially or if not for the most due to the fact that we have we don't know this folklore we don't know this story we don't know this setting and if it is derived from something that would be known or at least more familiar with folks uh in in india especially in this region of india i think they would grab a lot more from it there were there were a ton of things for me where the the story itself became uh kind of all over the place for me mm. and there were things that were part of the storyline that i questioned as to well then why don't you just do that uh, one of them for example was it seemed to be the the, the two main monsters of chatan and gary devon mm. gary devon was the one that wanted child sacrifice and chatan was the one that liked kids i didn't i didn't see a clear line as to why why are we even giving any attention to the one that wants child sacrifice it seems to me that as long as you appease the one who likes the kids there isn't going to be a problem in the place and then when they have a final battle why do these supernatural creatures have to devolve to just natural means with a fist fight that that was one of the, of many questions i had mm. watching the story gotcha. uh, and i i don't I'm interested in answers to some of the other questions that I had throughout it, but for the most part, that was one of the bigger questions for me, as well as I never got so engaged with the story and the characters that I had an investment in, for example, the fight with her brother and uh, uh, Sh uh, Shine's character mm -hmm. when they had that fight and he spoiler alert we're, we're yeah no right? we're spoilers. Yeah, yeah. We're spoilers. when he when he kills him it didn't matter to me that her brother died at all I, I was i had no dog in the i the whole time for me all that mattered to me was please don't hurt any kids and I, I don't hurt her but i didn't have an investment in any of the characters beyond that because the story kept kind of going all over the place things like take this and bury it in the dirt and it did that come back? The thing that she buried in the dirt that the lady in the forest told her to go bury? Well, she said never, never dig it up again. And it, it was there to protect her? I'm get, my guess is that was part of the folklore of whatever this R is. Yeah. So. And there were just a lot of things like that in regard to th this has to happen during the lunar eclipse. Why? Just because, okay, I'll just accept that at, at face value. Um, uh, why... Why did the guy in the attic stay alive for twelve generations? Other than it was penalty for his sins. I didn't. I didn't. There's so many things that I didn't understand. Why does that one not make sense? Why? It's just a, that's just him being cursed, and now he has to suffer for eternity, basically. Yeah, but okay. Then why does he have to stay in the attic? I mean, why? Why would you keep that guy in your attic? He's family. That's basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they like family. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's just a bunch of stuff like that. That for me. I just i didn't didn't have a payoff for me hmm. okay yeah uh yeah no i though most of those i mean there were some stuff that i that um in terms of i just assume it's part of the folklore that i don't understand but also that some of that stuff happens in horror films all the time like with anything with witches or so well, it has to happen during the full moon or blah 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 that's that's pretty common in terms of like when stuff has to happen for what reasons i don't usually care i'm like okay that's that's what you say um but I, I, I understand um my biggest issues were actually i just i think it was too long i would have much preferred to be an hour it and a half hour 45 it could have easily done that I, and i didn't even though the songs are very beautiful i actually don't think this kind of film needed the songs. i agree there was actually quite a few songs that i was like i feel like this is actually almost hindering your your even though they're very pretty 
like like the engagement mm -hmm. um, of this creepy style of film. And once again, it's India, so right. That's what I'm, like justification I think they had is like we need these songs promotion people like yeah, this kind of stuff it's been around in indian cinema so long yeah, that yeah. it doesn't do anything to suspension of disbelief yeah, for yeah, them yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah but i am um, and it wasn't really suspension of disbelief for for me in this one it was just that i think you could have made it even more snappy in terms of a film and keep people more engaged in this creep because i don't think people are there <coughs> in this style of film for the song i think people have come to this style of yeah, film no for the creepiness uh <coughs> and, and the folklore elements Sorry, um I'm getting... And there were a lot Leftovers of overs from my breakfast. There were lots of elements. Um, even though, like, did I care for the brother? No. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry that happens um, after I cough. Right, but I, no, I think or the anybody only, really. I, I think the only <clears throat> one you're supposed to care for is the girl. I don't actually think there's anybody else <clears throat> you're supposed to care for in this film because nobody else is really good except for the girl that kills herself. Um, and that was uh, really snappy. That I, I, was I, right after the thing. I don't I, think there's anybody else you're supposed to out kids, obviously. Well, the kids, obviously, yeah. and I, I do think there should have been. I mean, it seems when her husband tells her the story about his childhood and the fact that. So many people there. I mean, was he mentally ill? Was he not mentally ill? There comes a point where she sees a level of empathetic concern for him that I think if they had expanded upon that, that would have been really great to have seen him be somebody that you do care about and make that climactic moment when she has to kill him really tragic because mm -hmm. it could have been so much different if certain circumstances hadn't happened to this poor guy versus him being painted far more to me as just the antagonist in the film. Well, I think... Because they kept giving him medicine to suppress whatever he had going on when he yeah. cut off his hand and, right. and that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering if it was like almost a curse right. element as well. <laughs> they didn't. That was one of the elements that I wish they would have explained more exactly what was going on with him. Yeah. I think it was something like that. But yeah, I, I agree with that element of it in terms of I would have liked that that part of it explained a little better. Mm -hmm. If it was, please explain it to me. Um, even though... Uh, I did enjoy. I I I enjoyed the um, the creature elements in terms like we've talked about it already in terms of just their style, mm -hmm. but the fact that and we've seen it mostly in Dumbad in terms of that that whole brilliant sequence at the mm -hmm. yeah, I think there was some in the beginning of Tombad and from what I'm remembering obviously the end sequence in all over the, the yeah when they're all over the yeah, walls yeah, and the yeah, roof yeah. and the, yeah uh we see it a little bit there but this is obviously a little bit different than that as well these are like especially the um the child sacrifice one um it reminded me so much that, of something in Pan's Labyrinth or it was yeah such a creepy part when he sacrificed his son mm -hmm. I, I i really enjoyed that uh, element of it in terms of just how creepy this monster was mm -hmm. i'm like cool make these creepy kind of you don't see it a lot in indian cinema and i thought since the vfx team did such a phenomenal job on the design of them yeah and the makeup of great them, creatures uh was great um so, the, the i i'm assuming it was a real person inside that a hundred year old couple hundred year old man the original Lord, I yeah, or was it animatronic? I'm assuming right. for cost reasons it was a man in and they just in makeup in makeup. Either way, very good job, fantastic job. Um, so those, I wouldn't say it wasn't engaging because I I was engaged in this film. I just there were in times that I think it lagged a little bit, and I think you could have eliminated that just from eliminating because there was actually a decent amount of songs in this. Which I wasn't expecting for this style, and, the, of and the score for the most part was quite nice. Yes, um, I think you could have made it snappier. Agree. Uh, I think you could have um, explained stuff. Maybe maybe we're just dumb and and not uh, you Kerala people uh, that that know about this particular folklore. Please obviously tell us uh, if they explained everything correctly and we're just dumb and we didn't catch it. Um, my specific thing that it was was a. Uh, shine taku uh T shine tom's character of i would have liked to a little more clarity on exactly what was going on because mm -hmm. uh, there were a few different maybe, maybe that's the thing they didn't want to fully explain it but i feel like he had so much going on i needed a little more explanation of okay is it this is it is it a curse is it just mentally ill is it what is it? Even even if that hadn't been explained, which yeah. I agree, yeah. I would have liked that. Yeah, for sure. I go back to what I had said a, a little bit ago in regard to the fact of I really wish we had had... It would have been really 
powerful in the storytelling to have made him somebody who was misunderstood and treated so badly because of superstition. And when she comes to the place, she realizes at first when she's told you don't want to be married to this guy, that she realizes almost in the same aspect of, say, Quasimodo mm. of this man is so misunderstood. All he needs is love. Yeah, that would have And for him to not actually get that fulfillment and she realized that the only way she can save her child is for him to die. I would have loved that. Yeah, there, that would have obviously been obviously a different angle on it, but there was so much more going on that he clearly wasn't just a misunderstood character in this one, obviously. No. Because he had sinisterness behind him. He had evil. So I, that's why what well, gave me the, like the vibes of, is he possessed by one of these demigods? Is he just this evil, evil person? Which I don't think so. I, I there was, I think there was some type of either possession or curse or yeah, something there was going so on, much on with him because he literally did awful things. Mm -hmm. Oh, one element of the the brother fight <laughs> when he <laughs> destroyed his head after he was already dead. I love that part because yeah. blood came just up all, all like, over the, oh, in the man. water. That made me go like that. Uh, so that was that was nice. They also did very good on the VFX with the fingers cut off. Yes. That was seamlessly perfect. Like That was a really creepy, really, really good. Really creepy uh, filmed scene because obviously it's always fun when you go into a dark room and then you pan over and there's a guy just hunched over doing yeah, something. Yeah. Um, so imagery wise, it was really cool. Um, and then you figure out that he chopped off his uh, fingers. Um, and so all that was uh, extreme. So there's a lot, a lot of good elements in terms of I enjoyed it. Obviously, I know you didn't enjoy it as much, um, but there was a lot of elements that I, that I, I thought they did very well. I just wish some things were done better, maybe a little more snappy. Explanation as well. Yeah. I do agree. Yes. And, and for me, the, the primary thing of whether I liked a movie or didn't like a movie when it's on that cusp is I, I, measure, mm -hmm. I measure the aspects of would I watch it again? Mm. Did I enjoy it while watching it? And this, again, this had some of this in it. So the main thing is would I watch it again and would I recommend it to other people? And... I, I wouldn't watch it again, and my only recommendation would be the points we we mm. pointed out of, yeah, if you want to see the great cinematography, yeah. something that's very original, sure, but I, I, I think it's a crapshoot as to whether or not you're going to leave it having thought, wow, I really enjoyed myself. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would watch it again, um, but it's still not my, I would watch Kuntara and Tombad over this for sure. Without question. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, but anyways, let us know what you thought about this film. Did you like it? Didn't you like it? Uh, why we're stupid. Yeah, why we're stupid. Explain some of the stuff, obviously, that we had questions to. What should be the next Malayalam film that we should watch? Horror, specifically. Uh, since, obviously, I know most of you here are going to be Malayalis. Um, or Keralites, or... Uh, I don't know. And I think uh, both of those are yeah, yeah, they, right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Correct um, us. If we're, we're probably wrong. And any other spooky films that we should watch to finish out Spooky Month? Ooh. Let us know Ooh. down below.